This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. As Connecticut and other states move to restrict guns after the Newtown shooting more than three months ago, a city in Georgia's moved in the opposite direction. On Monday night, city council members in Nelson, Georgia, voted unanimously to require heads of households to own guns and ammunition. The so-called Family Protection Ordinance requires a gun in every home in order to, quote, provide for the emergency management of the city and protect the safety, security and general welfare of the city and and its inhabitants. People with certain disabilities are exempted from the requirement, as are, quote, those heads of households who are paupers or who conscientiously oppose maintaining firearms as a result of beliefs or religious doctrine or persons convicted of a felony, unquote. Um, officials admit they likely won't enforce the ordinance, which is modeled on a similar provision passed in nearby Kennesaw, Georgia, in 1982. Similar proposals in other states have recently been softened or rejected. The gun requirement has sparked national media attention. It's also sparked a local debate in Nelson, a city of roughly 1,300 people, which has only one police officer. We're joined now from a studio in Atlanta, Georgia, by Nelson residents on both sides of the debate. Jackie Jarrett's with us, a member of the Nelson City Council who voted along with other the other four members in favor of requiring all heads of households to own guns. And Lamar Kellett is with us, former chair of the Nelson Planning Commission. He opposes the gun requirement. We welcome you both to Democracy Now! Uh, let's begin with Jackie Jarrett. Explain why you supported um, this legislation that has passed. The City Council now requires all households to have a gun. Well, when I was approached by it, um, Dwayne Chronic asked me my thoughts on it, and I told him to let me take a look at the ordinance that was drawn up, and it was drawn up from the Kennesaw ordinance, and I really didn't see no uh, no way that we violate anybody's rights because we we were given uh, options to our people. I want to see good coming out of it because. Uh, we've got widow women there and uh, whatever that don't want a gun, uh, but yet they need some kind of protection. And this is sort of like hanging a sign up on the door, you know, saying they're they're protected. Uh, they don't have to tell nobody they ain't got a gun uh, or they don't want a gun. Let the criminal wonder what's on the other side of the door, you know. And uh, so I just seen it as a positive for the citizens in our town to... Uh, uh, to, to pass this bill and to support it, and especially was so uh, many people worrying about uh, uh, our our uh, amendment two rights being took away from us, and uh, I just seen it as a positive in, in any direction. I mean, if you're gonna, uh, you know, if you're gonna rob somebody, had you rather rob somebody? In New York, where they they got strict gun laws, and you can't own one. If you do, you just got to have three shells for it, you know. Or, or, or you you want to come to Nelson and try to rob somebody because you know they've got a weapon on the other side of that door. Lamar Kellett, why are you opposed to this law that has just passed in your town of in your city of Nelson? Well, Nelson has had no violent crime, and to my uh, research that I did for the past ten years. So, as you see, we are a very low crime area, and we also are living in an area that has a culture of gun ownership anyway. Uh, most of the people who want to own a gun have a gun. However, this ordinance is a mandate that you will own a gun whether you want one or not, and I've read over the disclaimers there, and I do not qualify for any one of those. So under the law, I am required to have a gun. So that is the kind of mandate that I oppose. That goes way beyond the Second Amendment, which the Second Amendment gives you the right to bear arms. And I feel like an individual certainly has the right to not bear arms. Um. And Yes, go ahead. Well, let me ask Councilman Jackie Jarrett. Uh, are you saying that Lamar Kellett has to get a gun? No, ma'am. Not no way. If Lamar Kellett wants to put a sign up in his yard saying, I am unarmed, uh, I don't believe in owning a gun, he can do that. And we will not send nobody out for him. And let me correct something that Lamar has just uh, stated here. That he, he was saying that he didn't qualify. 
uh, true Monday night when we voted for this, uh, he was saying that he was going to have to go out and buy, the, buy a gun. Uh, but that's not what he told to a uh, 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 reporter on, uh, on, on the news and everything. Let me see if I can find where it's at right here. Um, he had already said that he owned a gun and everything then. Now he's saying he don't. So which, which one's the, uh, the truth right here now? I've even got these somewhere here. I've got for you. Well, yeah. as you're looking for that, um, let me ask uh, Lamar Kellett about the uh, forces behind this proposal. Um, what uh, are the influences here that led to uh, the Nelson uh, ordinance? Well, from my observations and the timing of when this issue came to the forefront, uh, we had a Tea Party activist in the neighborhood that I live in, which is within the city of Nelson. And also there are two uh, Tea Party uh, members that are on the council that belong to the, uh, to the Tea Party uh, group out of Canton, Georgia. And one of their officials at the second reading came up and gave accolades to uh, both the two council persons and also the individual, the Tea Party activist, for their great work in seeing that this uh, ordinance uh, was passed. So it's, it's obvious to me, I don't know what the national stand is for the Tea Party, but for this local unit, there, they had a, uh, they had an agenda from the very beginning that this would pass. They had very little in the way of public input. It was all initiated, and the first time I heard about it was on Friday before the first reading of the ordinance on Monday. And well, there was very little debate. Jackie, uh, Councilman Jackie Jarrett, I want to ask you if this proposal spread to other cities. Bill McNeese, chair of the Tea Party in Canton, Georgia, said he hopes this does spread to other cities. Earlier this year, Spring City, Utah, passed an ordinance recommending residents keep firearms but backing off on language requiring guns. Residents of Byron, Maine, rejected a mandatory gun law last month after even the person who originally proposed it voted against it. Select men in Sabatis, Maine, also rejected a proposal to require gun ownership. If, uh, if it does spread, because, uh, you know, if somebody's trying to get in your door and do you yell out, uh, you know, I've got a gun, uh, do you think they're going to try to bust on in then? Whether you've got one or not, you know, we ain't saying that you have to have one, but we're saying the government is saying you need to have one, so keep it to yourself if you ain't. And so, I, yeah, I, I wouldn't mind uh, seeing it spread as far as that goes, but I'm not a member of the Tea Party or anything like that. I just seen it as a positive I, in every way. And uh, what I was looking for a while ago, Mr. Kellett here had uh, talked to the um, Associated Press, and at that time he said he did own guns. This was just a few days before he stood up at uh, our meeting and said he would have to go out and buy one because he didn't meet none of the criteria. Uh, so, I mean, you know, I... Sometimes it's hard to understand what he's saying. Um, uh, I want to have uh, Paul Barrett weigh in here, uh, who has written about guns for um, for many years. Paul, yeah, the, the question that uh, strikes me is whether either of these gentlemen thinks that uh, enactment of this ordinance is going to change day to day life in their uh, very peaceful sounding uh, small town. Well, what about that, um, uh, Councilman? Uh, Jackie Jarrett, you say that, yes, you've passed this ordinance, but actually no one has to get a gun. It's just good for people to think everyone has a gun. You say you won't put, um, uh, you won't put uh, Mr. Kellett in jail, even though he doesn't fit the requirements of people who, you know, could get out of owning a gun. Yeah, well, he, he does. Uh, one thing, if a man don't want somebody to think they've got a gun on the other side of the wall, uh, if he wants to allow a criminal to come in and not defend himself, uh, I would say he's got a mental capacity to not own one. So that in itself would be, you know, that'd be a defense for me if that's what I was thinking, you know. So yeah, it's, uh, yeah, we're not, we're not going to, we're not going to force him. That'd be unconstitutional. You can't do that. Well, uh, Lamar Kellett, does that make you feel better? 
uh, come again. I'm asking Lamar Kellett if it makes you feel better that you won't be jailed, you won't be arrested for not having a gun. Well, I never had any doubt about that because the model city that they are modeling their ordinance after is Kennesaw, Georgia. And Kennesaw will readily admit they have never enforced this. They've never issued one citation. And actually, the statistics that I looked at came from the FBI, indicated that in the years just before and just after the ordinance, there was Wait. very little change in Wait. the uh, crime rate within the city. So it didn't really prove that uh, this ordinance accomplished anything. The statistics that you sent uh, Dwayne Chronic and everything. Dwayne is a math teacher. He he looked them over. Uh, he gave me a, a list of them, uh, like uh, 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 murder and malice uh, uh, murder and everything from 1979 to 2011 uh, was 60 percent uh, decrease in it. Uh, uh, rape. 50% decrease. Robberies, 49% de decrease. Uh, aggravated assault, 38%. So I have these statistics too. And these are the statistics you sent to Mr. Cronick. But then you say that you're trying to act like the, the, uh, uh, the statistics went up, that all this stuff went up. You know, you've got to take into consideration that Kennesaw is a bigger place now. Nelson was, what, 500 people just a few years ago, and now they were 1,300. So, you know, the statistic there should be different, too, you know. So, uh, Lamar you know, Kellett, you your response? <clears throat> I'd like to respond to that comment. Uh, when he quotes that uh, the councilman with a master's degree, um, he looked at the statistics that I sent him, and then he gave me a rebuttal. And when he did that, he compared three years prior to the ordinance to 30 years after the ordinance. So his statistics were totally bogus. I don't have any idea uh, that when he learned uh, math that that was the way he did statistics. How far back do you want to go? Mr. Kelly. Well, we're going to leave it there because we have to end the show, but you could continue to discuss it on the car ride back since you're going back together to, um, to Nelson, Georgia, in an hour car ride from Atlanta. And it's a very interesting discussion that's happening in cars and homes and schools and TV studios all over the country right now. I want to thank you both for being with us. Uh, Nelson Councilman Jackie Jarrett, in favor of requiring guns for every household. Um, uh, the council voted on Monday night um, to make gun ownership mandatory. And I also want to thank Lamar Kellett, resident of Nelson, Georgia, former chair of the city's planning commission, opposes the ordinance passed Monday night requiring these heads of households to possess guns and bullets. And also talk about some legislation around the country um, right now that has been uh, proposed. Um, the Nelson City Ordinance is not the only attention-grabbing proposal to come up since the shooting in Newtown. Connecticut in February, a state representative in Missouri introduced a bill that would charge any member of the General Assembly who introduced gun control legislation with a felony. A voter referendum in Montana would grant police the authority to arrest FBI agents trying to enforce gun laws and charge them with kidnapping. And a bill passed by a state Senate panel in South Carolina in February would allow concealed weapons in bars, an offense currently punishable in that state for up to three years in prison. Um, in this last minute we have, Paul Barrett, I wanted to come back to you. You've been covering the whole controversy around guns for years now uh, with um, Bloomberg Business Week. The final issue of the international arms trade, um, the new law that has just or the new treaty that has just passed in the U.N., the U.N. Arms Treaty, albeit extremely watered down. Yeah, well, this is a, a largely symbolic gesture, but one that got nearly unanimous support uh, in the United Nations, with only uh, Syria, or, or Iran and North Korea voting against it. And the idea is that law-abiding nations should monitor uh, to whom they are selling uh, conventional arms, which sounds like a very um, uncontroversial uh, idea. 
the United States has, uh, has backed this at the United Nations level, but the really interesting issue is that it's clear that in the Senate, which has to ratify any treaty that the United States would sign on to, there is strong Republican opposition, and you have moderate Democrats who have also said they will vote against ratification. So and you're actually, gonna... the U.S. and the NRA actually stood together in July in actually preventing the treaty from going forward, though now it has passed in a very weakened version. Uh, well, it, it is certainly true that the NRA has been lobbying strongly against it, and the passage of the treaty is going to become a new point of fundraising for the, for the NRA. And if the U.S. Uh, doesn't pass it in the Senate? It stands with which countries? Well, I mean, sad to say, it stands with countries like, like North Korea and, uh, and Iran. Thanks so much for watching this report from Democracy Now!, your daily independent global news hour. We don't accept advertising or corporate funding, but rather rely on donations from viewers like you. Please make your contribution by visiting democracynow.org. We need your support today to keep bringing you this hard-hitting, in-depth reporting.